Mewing is based on the tropic premise. Lips together, teeth together, tongue on the roof of your mouth. Essentially using good oral posture to guide good growth or influence the balance of the facial structure after growth. Maintaining lip seal is an important element in this. Now, just before we dive into this, I would like to thank our generous supporters and Patreon who voted to cover this topic next. If you would like to vote on upcoming topics, see our videos a few days early, have your name credited in the videos, or thank us for helping you in any way, then please consider becoming a Patreon. I often view the lips as being the magnets of the mouth. I watch my patients who often struggle with lip seal. Usually I try to sneak a preview of them sitting in the waiting room and watch as they walk into the clinical room, seeing if their lips are together. Many really struggle to maintain a natural lip seal and the treatment suffers as a result. Finally, when they achieve it at a subconscious level, it jumps the whole process forwards and suddenly there is this improvement in lots of little areas. It's almost as if the act of achieving a natural lip seal brings everything together and makes the face bloom. I worry if I've ever achieved a really nice result without achieving it. Lots of people struggle at night. It's easy to close your lips when you think about it. It's much harder when you're asleep. I'm often asked for tips and hints to help in maintaining a lip seal at night. This is a major part of lip seal. Most of us are asleep for 30% of the time, so that it's around one third of your lip posture time. Check if your mouth is dry in the morning. Ask someone to check in on you or a partner to make notes when they can. Listening to any noise can help and apps like Sleep Cycle, Sleep Better, Sleep Tracker 24-7 or Sleep Health can all help. What is the problem? For most people, the distance from the tip of their nose to the tip of their chin is a bit too long because the face is down spine, meaning that the lips have to stretch too far to meet. To compensate, many people engage other muscle groups to bring their lips together. The classic muscle is the mentalis, the chin muscle. The classic method is, is to use the mentalis muscle to roll the soft tissue of the chin up and around the chin to raise the lower lip, damaging the form of the chin tip. Don't do this if you can avoid it. Lip seal should be a subconscious habit and recruiting additional musculature to assist damages facial form and appearance. However, the first step is to gain lip seal and worry about technique more once it's achieved. Also, if you lose lip seal, the effect is similar to two magnets being pulled apart. The lips recoil apart, pulled back by the tissue, which is frequently too short in relative terms, allowing the mouth to fall open, which also brings the tongue closer to the airway, which may exacerbate snoring and sleep apnea. Gaining a natural lip seal throughout the night is very important. There's good evidence that my functional therapy, or mewing, can have a large influence on sleep apnea. A 50% reduction in symptoms for adults is impressive. And I would think that gaining a natural lip seal would greatly help prolong this effect long after you stop the exercises. The first step that we usually recommend is lip taping. There are two approaches. One is to physically hold the lips together. The other is to act as a subconscious reminder. Initially, I would usually recommend someone uses the tape to physically hold their lips together. There are lots of methods and lots of tapes, but simply you are taping your lips together. Most people 
Start with lots of tape to make sure their lips are held together, closed. Once you succeed, wait a few months before you reduce the amount of tape progressively to the minimum. At this point, experiment with pacing the tape so that it does not hold the lips together, but acts to tug on the skin, acting more as a reminder than a physical blockage. We've covered the lip seal tape with Dr. Frank Siemens before. It's an excellent tape. It's not going to be the cheapest tape, but it really works very well and comes under the heading of the tapes that are going to physically hold your lips together. We have the woody nose, mouth strips, breathe easy, sleep easy. These strips go around here on the face and they're another method of helping hold your lips together, but also to remind you. And we have a Japanese product that is more discreet. It's working to hold the top to bottom to lip together in a central position. And again, this is acting more as a reminder than as a complete blockage. And many people are using small little stereo strips or sections of tape simply across the lips in small places. Again, this is as you get more used to it and you don't need a, such a large physical reminder to keep your lips together, you can reduce things down to a smaller and smaller and smaller amount so that you are not physically holding your lips together but reminding you through a tug on the skin to hold your lips together. One important thing to consider is you don't necessarily need to take the lips themselves. You can take a large length of relatively thin tape, this is micropore by 3M, and you can place it diagonally or in many different orientations because what you're doing here is trying to build a reminder to remind you to keep your lips together. So as you gain a reasonable lip seal with probably some more heavy duty taping, Gently wind back using less and less tape and try lots of different arrangements of tape. You know, you can use tape more vertically down the face, you can use it diagonally, anywhere that's going to act as a tug on the skin as you open your lips. So here you're not doing it for yourself, you're helping remind yourself to do it yourself. So one of my favourite tapes is the 3M Silicon Micropore. It's not the cheapest, but you can reuse it. You can stick it many times, and I know some families who want to use this tape. The idea is it's got a reduced chance of an allergic reaction, any rashes, and you can use it again and again, and that's what some families want to do. And it's quite good, you can place it, take it off, place it again, and it keeps it stick really well. And it brings another sort of contentious issue that people seem to discuss a lot is, should you be holding your lips together or in a relaxed position or a protruded position when you stick them? I think it's gonna be personal preference. I tend to prefer a much more relaxed position. So you, know, you have your lips fully relaxed. I often suggest people clear the corners of their mouth, the commissioners, before they put the tape on then put the tape on without a pout in a nice natural lip posture. The idea of having a natural lip posture is that's what you want to achieve. So I think you want to be holding yourself in the position you want to achieve. Another tip is your sleeping position. When you are trying to achieve lip seal, it's best not to sleep on your back. And what can help is something uncomfortable on your back, such as the classic, a half tennis ball stitched into the back of your pajamas. It is remarkably effective. Or if you have a partner, ask them to nudge you if you're snoring on your back. Best to roll over, better for them and better for you. Lip length. One of the limiting factors for many people is the relative length of their lips in comparison to their lower facial height, usually 
it's the upper lip. A good way to achieve this is first to stretch the lip length to make it easier and more comfortable to gain a lip seal. Ideally, after you have gained a lip seal, the total lip length will return to its previous length as dictated by your habits, reducing the lower facial third as it does so. Hence, why I see the lips as magnets of the mouth. A good lip stretch exercise is the granny shock exercise, which I was taught by Sandra Coulson. Open your mouth as wide as you can, while you pull your lips together as much as you can, and raise your eyebrows, effectively stretching your upper and lower lips. Hold this for five seconds or more. Try three sets of 10 stretches several times a day. Please, as ever, be scientific about this. Gain a good baseline measurement before you start. Place a ruler from just under your nose to the bottom edge of your upper lip. Usually it is only necessary to measure the upper lip, but it is more or less the same can be done for the lower lip. A top tip would be to take an image with the ruler in place. You should see some changes within a few months, and I don't recommend continuing for more than about six months, as the object is not to permanently lengthen the lips, but achieve a temporary gain. The permanent change should be in the lip seal habit. Many of you have too great a lack of tongue space or too much vertical growth and will struggle to maintain a lip seal without some help. I have seen a couple of interesting case presentations where individuals have had a genioplasty, a chin job, which has helped them gain a lip seal. What interests me was how the face transformed. I wonder if the surgeons noticed all the minor improvements which were staring at me, or if they really understood what had occurred. However, there was a reason that they chose these cases, and the faces certainly looked better. But don't imagine that I have all the answers. Take a second opinion. And there are lots of ideas out there in the mewing community. You could try anything from reminders to hypnosis. If you're new to the channel and you found today's videos interesting, then please consider subscribing. We're putting new videos out weekly covering topics like TMJ, crooked teeth, and practical advice on how to develop your facial structure and more. Again, I'd like to thank our patrons, especially Jonathan, Michelle, Venus and Austin for their generous contributions. If you would like to have your names credited in our videos, vote on upcoming topics or see our videos a few days early, please consider becoming a Patreon on patreon.com or the Tropix. If for any reason Patreon is not your style, but you would like still to help us make these regular videos a reality, or reward us for the benefits that we have already given to you, there is a link in the description to donate directly to us below. I'd also like to remind our viewers that half of all the money we raise goes to the Craniofacial Health Foundation a new charity dedicated to promoting awareness, education, research and changes to health policy for all aspects of craniofacial health. Thanks for making it to the end of the show. Show us your support through the links below. Bye.